Hello and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. We're jumping right into the witness testimony. Um, he's currently providing an updated testimony to the one he provided last episode because we correctly identified that his glasses were the ones crushed at the scene of the crime right here. And because of his uh, broken glasses, there's no way he could have properly identified uh, the defendants, uh, even though he claims to have seen her face. The girl in the upper path ran away as soon as she realized I was there. After that, I immediately called the police station to report the crime. It must have been 6.45 p.m. when I made the call. Didn't he say 6? No, I think he said over 6 p.m. So, okay, that's not inconsistent. They must have had a lot of free time on their hands and they showed up within 10 minutes. Isn't 10 minutes like a really slow police time? Or response time? So the person who was on the upper path saw you and then ran away. Yes, that is correct. Which is why even someone without a superior brain like mine can understand that. That girl is a murderer. You may question the witness now, Mr. Wright. Okay, let's see what we got. Ran away, called the police station, 6.45 p.m. Yeah, so it says time of death is 6.28, so what did he do for 17 minutes? Mr. Wellington, would you please take a look at this? You mean the victim's autopsy report? According to this, the murder occurred at 6.28 p.m. You said that you called the police immediately after the murder took place. However, by the time you had called the police, it was already 6.45 p.m. There's clearly a 15-minute gap here. Do you deny it? I think this court would like to hear what you were doing during this 15-minute gap. And the witness was in shock at the time after witnessing a terrible murder. It's only to be expected that he would be a little dazed. 15 minutes is hardly what I would call a little dazed. Mr. Wellington, explain yourself. What were you doing during those 15 minutes? Answer the question. I, uh, telephoned. I, I mean, I, I was searching for a phone booth. A phone booth? You mean you don't have a cell phone? You and your questions, as if you're trying to open, as if you're trying to open all the layers of a mat matryoshka doll. Is that how it's pronounced? Matryoshka. matryoshka. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that. You must think you're really something special. Witness, I lost my cell phone. There. Are you happy? You lost it. Unbelievable. You lose your glasses and your cell phone. You must be very scatterbrained when it comes to your belongings. What? Are you saying that all first-rate people are never allowed to lose things? Haven't you ever heard that all geniuses have a strange quirk or two? Uh... Yeah, it's again going by way too fast. Enough. Oh man, oh man. Wait, hold on a second. He lost his cell phone? Nick, that cell phone. Could it be? You mean this phone that Maggie found? There's no way. Boy, I didn't see this coming. Question further. Mr. Wellington, where's your cell phone right now? Huh, what are you getting so excited about? You seem to be a little bit confused. I found my phone, I'll have you know. See, here is it. Or here it is. Here is it? Is here is it grammatically correct? I've never heard anyone say that before. Oh, I see. Hmm, it looks like he's got his phone. And I thought just maybe this was his. Well then, I think we've cleared this issue up. At the time of the murder, the witness did not have his cell phone because he had lost it. Therefore, the delay in his call was caused by his search for a phone booth. Well, that's the gist of it. I guess you could put it at that way and leave it at that. Wasn't there like a phone booth right next to him in the picture? 
Yeah, that's literally a phone booth right in front of him. All right, so we're going to have to press that. Do you have any further questions? Yep. Your Honor, the witness's testimony does not make any sense. I don't believe that there was ever a need for the witness to search for a phone. How dare you? You can't just make outrageous claims like that. You do have some sort of proof, don't you? Well, yeah, of course. All right, this evidence should be good enough, I think. All right, let's have this proof then. Please present proof that the witness had no need to search for a public phone booth, because it was right in front of his face. Boom. Whoops, sorry, I hit the wrong button. It's quite simple, actually. Please take a look at this. At the crime scene photo. Is there a problem with it? Oh, there's nothing wrong with the picture. But if you don't understand my logic after looking at it, something is wrong with you. It's... it's... a phone booth. That is correct. All the defendant had to do was walk three steps. Mr. Wellington, why did you not use the phone that was right in front of you? Order, order. What does reporting the crime a little late prove for the defense? The witness can't explain what he was doing for those 15 minutes. That is reason enough to throw suspicion on his testimony. Yes, this is very true. What do you have to say for yourself, witness? That I bet this phone it really is his, Nick. He must have killed Dustin to get his phone back. But Maggie said that he was going to return or she was going to return it to him. So there's no reason for him to kill for it. And on top of that, we still have the phone she found anyway. Hmm. But if he wasn't looking for a cell phone, maybe he was looking for something else. Was he... Yes, Your Honor? Do you have any thoughts you would like to share with the court? Can you offer an explanation as to what the witness was doing during those 15 minutes? Maybe writing Maggie? I don't, I don't think that would take you 15 minutes, though. Yeah, I guess that's what I'll go with. There's only one possible explanation. Alright, let's hear your explanation. However, be forewarned that if your explanation is not persuasive, you will be penalized. Think carefully before you present, Mr. Wright. Please present to the court the, uh, the one piece of evidence that will answer the following. Why didn't the witness call the police right away? Uh, because he was writing Maggie, I guess. Perhaps this is the evidence you need to be convinced. Perhaps. Ah, dang it. Ah, uh, okay. Let's see. Why didn't the witness call the police right away? I guess the phone? No. Okay, we're running low on health here. I mean, maybe the names list? No. Shoot. Sorry, guys. Why didn't the witness call the police right away? It's not the phone. It's not the... Body was also covered in bruises. Glasses. Maybe he couldn't see? Birthday present. Business card. We'll try the glasses. I don't... Okay, it's glasses. Mr. Wellington. Oh, what? Don't do that. You almost gave me a heart attack. These are your glasses, aren't they? Uh, where? Where did you find? I believe the court all heard what you just confessed to. That these glasses are, in fact, yours. I'll tell you where they were found, Mr. Wellington. 
These glasses were found under the victim's body. Uh, under the victim's body? Order, order. N now wait a second, hold on. I, I didn't confess or confirm anything. Your Honor, I think the answer is quite clear here. As he fell, Dustin Prince grabbed the culprit's glasses. The culprit knew that he had to find his glasses and search frantically for them. What he didn't realize was that they were under the victim's body. And that is why it took him 15 minutes to make that call. M Mr. Wright, are you... Are you indicting the witness as the real murder? Of course. That is precisely what I'm doing. <laughs> Alright, we got him on the ropes now. Oh, so he really needs to be careful with that scarf of his. He might choke himself. I know I'm right. He is the real murderer. Did you figure it out, Nick? More or less. Turns out this cell phone was the key to this case after all. Anyway, now is our chance to deep six this guy. I'll sink him in one shot. Yeah, this is so exciting watching you work again. Somehow, my old self is coming back to me. Oh, I got goosebumps. It's time to sink or swim. Everything rests on the edge of a knife. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Order, order. Your Honor, the defense the defense is making a mockery of this court. Without any solid ground to stand on, he accuses the witness of being the murderer. Yeah, that that's right. I, I'm no criminal. This third-rate fraud of a lawyer. In that case, why don't we look at it from a different perspective? Let's hear your explanation as to why you are not the murderer. Why, that's that's easy. Uh, for example, there's um the name the victim wrote. What about that? Oh, you mean the name Maggie? Y yeah, even an idiot like you can read that, right? But we already know that this was not written by the victim himself. After all, the defendant's name is Maggie and the victim was left-handed. In other words, in order to make the defendant look guilty, the real criminal used the victim's right hand to write her name on the ground. But, 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 wouldn't that mean the real criminal was someone the defendant knew? Otherwise, how else would that person know her name was Maggie, or, uh, Maggie? That is a good point. The witness didn't even know of Miss Bride before the trial, Bird. I forgot. Was there any way this creep could have known Maggie's name beforehand? The phone call. It would be best if I could prove that the witness had a chance to learn that a name that the defendant's name was Maggie. Now, will the defense please present its case? How could the witness have known the defendant's name? Cell phone. Mr. Wellington, you didn't have your cell phone with you on the day of the murder, correct? So what if I didn't? When you realized you had lost it, what did you do? What did I do? Didn't you try to find it by calling it? Why you... How did you... Your Honor, these questions have nothing to do with... Overruled. Miss Wright, where are you going with this line of questioning? Do you think there is some relation between the witness's cell phone and the murder? I do, Your Honor. On the day of the murder, Maggie Bird picked up a lost phone in the park. And... She also received a phone call from the owner of that phone. Um, hello? Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can give this back. I'll be right there. Um, I'm sorry. I didn't catch your name. You can call me Maggie. That was when you learned her name was Maggie. But you made one fatal mistake. My client's name is Maggie, but the name written on the ground was Maggie with an IE. This is, make that, this is a mistake that could only occur if all you knew was how her name sounded. Order, order. But, but, your honor, the witness has no motive. And your point is? It's very simple, your honor. A person usually would not kill someone without a reason. Mr. Wellington had no reason to kill anyone. That is absolutely correct. I don't have a motive. Hmm. Mr. Wright. Can you, can you explain what motive this witness could have had? 
It's very simple, Your Honor. Are you sure, Nick? If I said I can't offer an explanation, then the trial's over, right? Yeah, but... Now then, please present to this court proof that the victim, that the witness, had a motive. It's gotta be that name list. Mr. Wellington's motive is right here. What is this? A list? These phone numbers were pulled from the memory of the phone the defendant found. And we have determined that the people on this list are members of a certain group. You. You looked up all those numbers. Of course. This list of phone numbers was stored in the cell phone memory. The names and numbers belong to people who are members of a certain con artist group. What? what, what? Con artists? Can you explain why these numbers were on your phone, Mr. Wellington? This is an outrage. An invasion of privacy. Looking up the phone numbers on the person's phone is a crime worse than murder. You're one of those people. You're just like the- uh, again. I don't care, Mr. Wellington. All I want is for you to tell me what this list is about. You think you, any of you, know what it's like to be a refined man such as me? Your Honor, th this is this is unjustified badgering of the witness. Objection overruled. Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? Why would the witness have the numbers of a group of a group of con artists on his phone? Isn't that obvious? The witness is a member of that group. Mr. Wellington is a member of this very group. All of your friends' phone numbers are stored right here on this phone. If anyone were to look into these numbers, it would be all over for you. That is why you had to kill. Hmm, that does make quite a bit of sense. Well, Mr. Wellington, would you care to explain? I, um... I got you now. I, that, I, that police officer... Your Honor. What is it, Mr. Payne? Your Honor, th this is this is unjustified badgering of the witness. You said the exact same thing a only a few seconds ago. But please, please, let's think about the content of that phone call. The defendant had already promised that she would return the phone. After that, all Mr. Wellington had to do was meet Mr. Miss Pride on his way back, on his way to get his phone back. Why then would he need to kill anyone? Hmm, that is a valid point. What does, the, what does the defense think about this? Well, if you think about it logically, then it makes sense. Then maybe we should think outside of the box. Maybe that slime ball saw something at the crime scene that made him commit murder. Your thoughts, Mr. Wright? I don't think Mr. Wellington went to pick up his phone in a very friendly manner. But he was promised his phone, so why would, he why would he have been unfriendly to defendant? I think he must have seen something that he didn't agree with him when he got there, or that didn't agree with him when he got there. Well then, Mr. Wright, what was this something that didn't agree with the witness? And we will figure that out next episode. So yeah, lots of exciting stuff happens, and looks like we only have two chances left in our little health bar there, so it's going to be cutting it pretty close. Yeah, we'll pick up right here in the next episode. So until then, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you then.